Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Tyler Matheson. Susie Garab has the night off. Well, the week started with a hint of optimism, thanks to a duo of deals. But there was a greater hint of caution as investors paused ahead of a number of high-profile economic reports this week, corporate earnings, and underlying concerns about geopolitical risk. Today, the White House says it expects the European Union to impose new sanctions this week against Russia, and that the U.S. will impose additional measures as well. And deal news, which saw former rivals Zillow and Trulio and Dollar Tree and Family Dollar get together, offset discouraging pending home sales for June. More on that in just a moment. At the close, the Dow Industrials were up 22 points to 16,982 and change. The Nasdaq, though, inched lower, falling four, and the S&P 500 rose fractionally to 1978. But attention now turns to some very important data this week, including the July employment report, our first read on second quarter growth, and a meeting of the Federal Reserve thrown in for good measure. Steve Leisman has more. The Fed's meeting this week comes amid a slew of important economic data that could influence Fed policy. So for Fed Chair Janet Yellen, the question is whether the numbers will throw a wrench into the current plans to exit gradually from its easy monetary policy, or will inflation, better growth, and more jobs force the Fed to move more quickly? The risks this week are that the Fed continues its gradual tapering of policy. At the same time, the market becomes ever increasingly worried uh, that the Fed's behind the curve. Among the big data we get this week on Wednesday, we'll get the ADP report. The private payroll company tries to estimate the government jobs number. Economists looking for 233,000 private sector jobs to be created. Also, we'll get the first read on second quarter GDP, seen near 3%, almost reversing the first quarter decline of 3%, and GDP prices seen rising about 2%. Friday, we get the payroll report at 234,000. The unemployment rate seen ticking down one tenth to six percent, and wages seen rising 0.2 percent. If the data are strong, UBS's Mattis thinks it could start a process that will not see the Fed hike sooner, but hike faster once it starts. And the real reason is because they are going to be hitting all of their targets with the Fed funds rate at zero and a balance sheet that's $3 trillion too large. And, and for us, that math doesn't add up. Something's got to give. If you're trying to tighten policy and you have a balance sheet that supposedly creates stimulus on its own, and that's going to be $3 trillion too high, then, and the only thing you can move is rates, rates have to go up faster. But the consensus in the market is that Yellen won't blink. Only a slight tweak is expected to the Fed's statement on Wednesday to take note of the improving jobs market. But there are likely to be serious behind-the-scenes discussions from some hawks and even a few centrists who want to speed up the pace of tapering and even move up the timetable for hiking interest rates. Yellen is likely to resist calls from moving faster, especially because of the big GDP decline in the first quarter and because of the housing data, which she views as key to the recovery, has been so mixed. But the question is whether the data in the form of higher inflation or better jobs growth forces her hand. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Steve Leisman. Here to give us some investing guidance for the remainder of the year are Andres Garcia Amaya, global market strategist with J.P. Morgan Funds, and Barry Bannister. He's a market strategist at Stiffel Nicholas. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to have you with us. Andres, let me begin with you, uh, and let's focus uh, especially on the geopolitical tensions that are around the globe right now. Do they fundamentally change your view uh, of the global economies and markets and what I should do with my money, or do they merely increase short-term volatility? I think the second option you just provided, I think the fundamentals really come down to how are corporate earnings doing, which rely a lot on the economy here in the United States. And we expect that to continue to accelerate, although at a slower pace than we're accustomed. So yes, the situation in Ukraine could deteriorate. Yes, the situation in the Middle East could, could spike once again, and it could create short-term volatility. But for our viewers that are trying to retire one day, is that going to dramatically change their asset allocation? The answer for me is probably not. All right. Thank you for that, uh, clearing that up. Barry, uh, you have uh, an interesting forecast here. It's one you've stuck with for the year. You think the S&P 500 will dip down this quarter to what? The 1850 level. Yeah, that would be about right. Uh, Obviously, the number one rule since 2009 has been do not fight the Fed. And we were bullish in 2013. But when you look at it, uh, low inflation, low interest rates, cheap wages, and a devalued dollar are largely in the market. And so what you're betting on now is continuity. 
So what, what do you think could trigger it, or do you think we're already beginning that slow grind lower uh, over the next 60 days? Well, a, a post-recession economy is a little like a patient in a hospital. You've got to have a handoff from policy life support to sustainable GDP and credit growth that forestalls deflation. Uh, I think it's going to be a rocky handoff, and every time the Fed has uh, let go of the handlebars, so to speak, uh, with QE, we've had some disruption. We'll see how the fourth, uh, third quarter goes. You know, Andres, you are not in, in Barry's camp. In other words, you're not, uh, you're not picking, uh, suggesting that the, that the market may falter uh, by 5 or 6 percent here. Uh, but, but you do say that you're no longer in love with equities. What's changed? Yeah, so if you think about what the biggest drivers for equities long term are is earnings growth and valuations. Right, last year we were pounding the table saying equities look cheap and by the way earnings growth should continue to move up higher. Now valuations are no longer as attractive. They're not expensive but they're no longer as attractive. So we're left with one driver which is earnings growth. So we still like equities but we don't love them as much as we did before when we had two of the major drivers pushing returns higher. So really what I hear you saying there Andres is is watch profit growth because your capital growth is probably going to be linked very closely to that. The speculative part uh, of your investment return, the valuation, isn't going to help you that much. Exactly. Now, the last thing that I would add is what are your other options, right? So cash is yielding you nothing. And obviously, fixed income could be affected negatively if the Fed decides to raise interest rates sooner than maybe the market expects, which leaves us again with equities as our favorite asset So, class. Barry, leave me with one idea between now and year end that will either save me money or make me a little money. Well, it's a long shot, but uh, one of the big things that I've noticed about the market is that as we enter a period where everyone's on one side of the trade, the least expected thing happens. So mm -hmm. if real rates go negative, and if growth is a little stronger than expected and overseas rebounds and real rates go strongly negative because the Fed stuck at zero, then you could see the precious metals actually finish the year quite strongly. And year to date, they've done just fine versus stocks. Andres, let me ask the same sort of question to you. If there's a sort of one idea that you'd like to leave the viewers with to either protect their capital or grow it a little bit for the remainder of 2014, what might it be? I think uh, Euro European equities uh, have had a tough run the last couple of weeks, uh, but I expect that if the European economy actually picks up growth, you could see significant earnings growth for this year and next year. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate your help and your insight. Andres Garcia Amaya with JP Morgan Funds, Barry Bannister at yeah. Stifel Nicholas. Thanks again.